This, ladies and gentlemen, is the brand new Honda Hornet. A whole bike which has been completely rebuilt for 2023. New parallel twin motor, putting out 90 horsepower. Pretty peppy, this thing. And a whole new chassis, bodywork. Today, I'm gonna to take this out for a nice little thrash around the countryside. I think we have some sunshine out there. It's a little bit cold, but I've been riding this bike for the last two weeks. I've learned quite a lot, a lot about this machine, and it's time for me to bring you the video and I'll let you know what I think to this bike. Not only what I think to this bike, how it compares to some of the competition which I've ridden in the past. So uh, if that sounds of interest, you know what you've got to do. Get yourself a nice brew and chop C, roll the intro. So here she is again, the Honda Hornet, a bike I've been riding for the last two weeks actually. And a bit of a spoiler alert, this bike is really, really good. It's really surprised me how good this bike is. Now, as I've got it in front of me, the, probably the worst thing about this bike, and I think something Honda could have done a little bit better, is it, yeah, the looks of it. It's a little bit bland looking, isn't it? I actually really prefer the looks of the Honda CB650R I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. I think at the top there, I think that looks much better. They've made, you know, that looked like a, a modern retro, you know, it looked cool. I don't know, it's just lacking a little bit of spice, you know, it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay. And I think that's the problem, it's only okay. They could have done a little bit more with the looks of this machine. But looks are on everything and it's subjective, obviously. At least this one's got an interesting color scheme. One of the fantastic things on this new bike is this new five inch TFT Honda have come out with. I mean, it's a really clear, easy, classy display. You know, really, really nice display on this machine. And you've even got various modes, you know, different layouts for the rev counter. I like a big rev counter, so I've got that layout, but there's various other modes on there. I'll, I'll pop some on the screen a bit later. But the, the, uh, the TFT is very nice. The engine on this bike is also very, very nice. Have a listen to this. Pretty fruity. <laughs> I tell you, when, when I first jumped on this bike, it, it blew me away with the performance of this engine. I really wasn't expecting the sort of performance this thing packs and uh, I know I moaned a little bit about parallel twins when we came out last time on the CB but this is just a prime example of why they are why they do actually work very very well on a road bike because you get instant response and I think that's that's the biggest surprise for me when I jumped on this bike was just how peppy and responsive this engine is it's got instant pickup and it sort of carries that power right through to the top of the rev range as well so uh, yeah the, the, the engine is surprising and 90 horsepower and 74 newton meters of torque for this engine which makes this actually it's almost 20 horsepower more than the MT-07. I think the MT-07 is around 70 horsepower. It makes it 10 horsepower more than the Trident, which I think is 80 horsepower. So it's surprisingly peppy and it's got some real punch to this motor. I know this is actually a 755cc, you know, whereas the Trident's a 660, the MT-07 is more or less a 700, so it is packing more cc's, this machine. But you can really feel that and you know, when you're sub 100 horsepower, the closer you can get to that 100 horsepower mark, it really makes a difference. And it's a massive surprise, this bike, how fast this engine is and how much fun this motor is as well. And another thing with these middleweight bikes, when I mean, this is laden with electronics, for a middleweight bike, this is laden with electronics. You know, full ABS, traction control, adjustable engine braking. You know, it's got some real high tech, I mean, adjustable engine braking on a, a small parallel twin budget machine, you know, it's, it's incredible. And I thought, you know, 
traction control you know on these small capacity bikes it what's the point of having all these electronic aids and that but i say this is so punchy you really need it and when you're on the gas in first and second it's pulling the wheel up you know it, it's it's surprising it's surprising this bike and i couldn't believe it when i jumped on it just how how much fun there is available here so before I get too carried away with myself, let's just give a few stats for those which don't know. So I'm six foot two, 20 stone. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not the ideal size for this bike. You know, I'm, I'm a big old unit, but I've ridden the CB650 recently. I, I found that really fun, really nice. I've also ridden the CB1000 recently, which I'll put a link at the top, which even though that's a thousand CC bike, I found that a little bit cramped. This is actually got a bit more room on this than you do on the CB1000. The riding position feels very similar actually to the CB650R on here. And look at that drive I've got, you know, just going on the power then in fourth gear and I'm, I'm just picking up speed so quickly. But it's the CB1000R had a very soft suspension setup and the CB650R had more of a sporty suspension setup. And I'd say this also carries over that sporty feel to the suspension. Now th this bike costs £7,000, £6,999, so it, you know, it's built to a budget this machine and if there's one area where there's been a little bit of skimping, it's, it's on the suspension and that's not unusual, you know, for these sort of middleweight um, nakeds like this, you know, you don't have any adjustable forks, you just have preload adjustment on the rear, which I've taken all the way up because I'm a big fatty. But the suspension is, is one of the areas which you could probably improve on. But it's way better than the likes of MT-07. You actually get some full shower upside down forks. Very similar, I think, the suspension on this to the CB650R. I think the suspension feels very, very similar, which is good enough. It really is good enough. And you can throw this around. You know, it handles this bike. It handles. The suspension can be a little bit crashy over bumps you know and it, it perhaps it's not got the the most support you know like i say i'm a big fatty so it's not really designed and set up for someone of my size so i think if you're a smaller rider a lighter rider you'll probably find this suspension absolutely cock on from a comfort point of view i've spent four hours on the bike last week i went down to weymouth i spent two two hour stints in the saddle and I found it perfectly comfortable. After two hours riding back from Weymouth, I had no discomfort. I was really surprised. I mean, I'm sort of locked into the seat a little bit. There's not a huge amount of room to move around and it's sort of sunken and I can feel the, you know, the tail unit just touching the back, my lower back. But despite that, it is surprisingly comfortable. I think more comfortable, the seat's a little bit wider than the CB1000. So I actually think this bike, suits a, be a larger rider better than the CB1000 does, um, unbelievably. Grunt, oh it's just so much grunt there. <laughs> this one also comes with the optional quick shifter blipper, which is also very good. Surprisingly good quick shifter blipper and, it, and also within the menus of the bike there's loads of fine tuning adjustment for the quick shifter blipper as well. You can change how aggressive it, it changes. The brakes on it are very good actually, you know, 300 millimeter discs up front, loads of stopping power. And when I go hard on the brakes, you can see there is a bit of suspension dive. And that's what I'm talking about, you know, the, the limits of the suspension a little bit within the budget. Because, you know, as I say, the, these bikes are very much influenced by the bean counters with these machines so they are very much built to a budget obviously honda wanted to bring this in and undercut the competition with the price of this bike and they've done that i mean this is this is 400 pound cheaper than the mt07 a, a full thousand pound cheaper than the trident and it's got more power than both of those bikes it's got proper I mean, the MTO7, as I say, it doesn't even have upside down suspension. It's got conventional right way up suspension. The chassis on that bike is, has a lot of flex in it. This, this handles much better than the MTO7, I would say, definitely. Probably similar to the, the Trident also handles well. Probably similar handling to the Trident. But it's outdoing both those bikes on power and it's cheaper. So, yeah, Honda had done something really rather. Let's go down again. What a second gear. The wheels up. I mean it's fun that's the thing these 
270 degree cranks bring, you know, they bring that pep. All right, got to be a little bit careful. It's quite dirty, the road. It's also only about four or five degrees this morning. It's really cold, but I wanted to sort of show you how much fun this is in the twisties as well. <laughs> and it weighs 190 kilos, fully fueled, so it's pretty light on its feet. You know, it's a pretty lightweight bike. I think the MT-07 is about six kilos lighter, so it's a little bit heavier than the MT-07, but it's more it's exactly the same weight as the Trident. So you've got that sub 200 kilo weight. It's not um, amazingly quick steering. I mean, it's not got a too an aggressive rake angle on the forks. You know, it, it doesn't feel unstable at higher speeds. You know, you, you have to put a little bit of bar pressure in. So it's not super flickable, you know, super intense. It's like the Tuono, the Tuono 660 was very much on the nose and it really flaps left and right, it changes direction very, very quickly that bike. It's a bit slower to change direction than the Tuono 660. But I think they've got it quite well balanced to give you a bit more high speed stability. As you can tell, <laughs> I think it's rather good this. Another thing which is great with the engine on this is it's so easy. You know, you can bang it into neutral. There's no hunting for neutrals, which does irritate me. There's none of that on this. It's very, very easy to live with. There, there's very few gripes. I actually can't think of any rider gripes in the, that, that have come up in the time I've been riding this. If I had one gripe, it would probably be around town, this, this super punchy engine can feel a tiny little bit aggressive when you're in traffic. Not because it's snatchy, the fueling is perfect, but just because it just wants to go all the time. You have to perhaps finesse the throttle a little bit when you're in town. Not huge amounts, and the, and the great thing about this is you've got four different rider modes, and if you put it into something like the rain mode, you know, it, it calms it all down. So, but it, it can be, and I'm picking, I'm picking at straws here really, but in town, you have to finesse the throttle a little bit because it just wants to go and it's so punchy. The hill climb road is a little bit wet, unfortunately. We're not going to be able to uh, tip this onto its nose completely. But the way it just swings left and right, the tank is also has a lovely cutout here. Sort of hook your legs under so you can get out of the seat. You can get your knee out on this and it feels very natural. It doesn't feel like you're sort of fighting the bike. I guess the, the downside with that is the seat is quite, um, I'm quite sort of fixed in, you know, there's no, not much back and forth, so you, you can't move back and forth very much, but you can hang off it nicely, move across the bike nicely, and the ergos with the tank are really nice for your knees as well. Drop a cod and, uh, woo! <laughs> oh, this is such fun, this thing. It is an absolute hoot, this thing. This is another twisty little route, but it's probably going to be a little bit damp. The flip is great for just knocking it down. Yeah, it's a little bit damp here. But the bike does handle, you know, that's the difference. The bike, the chassis is great, the suspension's good. It does handle this thing. Much more than it has any right to, really for a 7,000 pound motorcycle. Honda has spent a lot, quite a while, I think, setting this up, and I think Honda can be a little bit, you know, they're, sometimes their suspension setups aren't great out of the box. I think the CB1000R is a great, a great example of that. You know, it's a very soft machine, whereas I was expecting this to be very soft. It's not, it's a little bit, it's a tiny bit soft, but it's not too soft. The suspension isn't too bad. You know, when you're building a bike to meet a £7,000 price target, the suspension isn't bad at all. First gear. The traction control is keeping the wheel down there. Woo! <laughs> it's straight up there. The styling of this bike is not in line with how it rides. It's really fun, engaging, and it doesn't look like it's going to be that. And that, that is my biggest criticism with this bike, is Honda have been a little bit safe 
with the styling of this machine. I think the CB650R actually looks much better than this. It has sort of a modern retro look on the CB. Looks great. I think they've been a little bit too conservative with the styling of this bike, which is a real shame. So it doesn't, you know, the image and when you look at this doesn't fit with how it rides at all. They could have gone a bit more wild with it. And I think if they had gone a bit more wild with this machine, these would be flying off the shelves. I'm sure they will anyway, because this bike is under £7,000 and it's incredible to ride. But I, I just wish Honda had been a bit more daring with the styling. First gear. Oh, that's fast. <laughs> so say you did want to turn off your traction control. It's, it's a little bit fiddly to get into those menus. You have to hold this four way. You have to hold this button across for a few seconds and it brings up the menu. And then you've got all these adjustments I was telling you about rider mode. So if we go into the rider mode, then go to the traction control, turn that off. And there's your engine braking adjustment and your power mode adjustment. Then go back. And then we have to go back again. And now the traction control is off. So it's a, it's a little bit of a faff. Self-cancelling turn signals, which also work very, very well on this. Up and down. Oh, you've got medium. Look, so you can adjust how soft. Let's have a hard. Let's have a, let's have a hard uh, change to the quick shifter. So, I mean, all this sort of stuff you can do. You've also got display types as well. That one, that one. I mean, look at these, different display types you've got. Ooh, should we try a different one? Oh, that one looks quite funky. Let's try that one. <laughs> so what are the things which I'm not so keen on with this machine? And, and honestly, there's really yeah, I'll be clutching at straws to point out things I don't like with this. I mean, I'm not a big fan of having the indicators on all the time, as like the running lights with the indicators. <laughs> as, as I say, I'm clutching at straws. I'm clutching at straws as to what I don't like or what I would change with this machine. The vibrations are fine, there's no issues with vibes. The fuel consumption is also very good. The only thing it, it doesn't have, this dash is brilliant, but it doesn't have a distance to empty. So there's no countdown to empty. So you've got a fuel gauge and you've got fuel blocks, but there's no sort of distance to empty. So that, that's something that would have been nice to, to have on there. You've got all your miles per gallon information. I mean, I'm averaging 50 and I'm riding it like a complete tool you know it's it as i say it's hard not to just ride this bike everywhere flat out because it's so much fun i'm still getting 50 miles per gallon even though i'm riding it like that but you don't get any countdown till empty so i'd like to see that there's also no outside air temperature on the display but hey ho you know this bike costs under seven thousand pounds <laughs> you can't really moan that it's got no outside air temperature display you know, as I say, I'm clutching at straws. So let's get it in town and I'll just show you what it's like on the throttle in town. As I say, this bike does not have a snatchy throttle. I mean, I've ridden bikes with snatchy throttles. The, uh, the Kawasaki RS650 has a little bit of a snatchy throttle. This doesn't, this is fueled beautifully. So if, if a bike's got a snatchy throttle, no matter how much throttle input you give it, it's got a bit of a lurch and you can't get away from it. This isn't like that, but this is just a requires a little bit of finessing because of how sort of instant the power response is. But you know, I'm pooling through here, third gear, let's go down to second. You know, you've just got to be nice and smooth with the throttle and it's absolutely fine. But if you're a little bit tired, you know, and you're a little bit, you're not very good at finessing a throttle and you're a little bit ham-fisted, that's when it can be a little bit, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's to the extreme, but yeah, you just got to be smooth and, and nice on the throttle and it's absolutely fine, but it's certainly not snatchy. It's fueled beautifully. And if, and if you did want to make it a little bit easier, if you press the, the, the mode button, when it's a rain mode, then it flattens all that out. And even ham-fisted movements, you know, it doesn't upset the bike. On the motorway, 70 miles an hour is just over 4,000 revs. 
container, it really cruises on the motorway. You can cruise at 80, 85 even on this, pretty comfortably. You know, it's geared nice and tall at the top. You know, if you would even push it to 80, just temporarily because I'm overtaking, four and a half thousand revs at 80, so you can sit at 80 all day. Obviously, it's fully naked, so you do get a lot of wind up here, but there's not, the, the screen offers a little bit of protection, but you know, it's not too bad. You're getting clean air hitting your body, which is the main thing. And, you know, it's pretty reasonable just sat at motorway speeds and the engine just ticks over nicely. Some tiny vibrations coming through the bike at this speed, but nothing extreme. Hardly anything through the bars. Perfectly comfortable to sit at motorway speeds on this. When I first jumped on this bike, I had a very sort of some set preconceptions of what this was going to be like to ride, you know. Looking at the styling of it, I thought, yeah, yeah, it'll probably be all right, you know. You know, a beginner bike, you know, something you can you know, poodle around town on, you know. I, what I wasn't expecting was it to be as much fun as it is. It's an absolute hoot to ride this. I, I just wish Honda had been a little bit more daring with the styling of this bike because I, I do think the styling is a little bit safe it could have been you know they could have gone a little bit more wild with it to match what it's like to ride because it's a really fun exciting bike to ride this so it's a little bit shame they've uh, they've been very safe on the styling but again that that's subjective isn't it and you might you know a few little mods to it you might be able to sexy it up a little bit but uh, it's a little bit of a shame. It's not a little bit more sexy. But I will be back with this bike again because we're gonna do a comparison with this machine. We're gonna do a comparison with this to either the Trident or the MTO, MT07. So me and Greg are gonna do a comparison and then the winner of that comparison we're put up against the new 790 KTM Duke. As that's like the big boy, the most power within the, this middleweight uh, sort of segment you know so if that sounds of interest stick around stay tuned press that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video cheers guys